Hi, everyone. Hi, good morning, good evening to everyone. Can you guys hear me and see me? I just did a sound check. So you guys should actually be able to see me. More importantly, see the screen, right? Hi, good evening, Freddy. Good evening, Ashok. Okay, thanks, Jiga. Thanks, Ragni. Thanks, thanks, everyone. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so, wow. Yeah, wow, we are having a lot of uh, people joining. Um, hi, good day to you, Bartholomew. Right, good good to be back, right? I recognize your name, definitely. Uh, okay, Donald, my voice is like a robot. Uh, probably the connection issue, okay? Uh, I definitely don't sound like a robot, though maybe my wife may say that I neck like one, but <laughs> I, I hope I don't sound like a robot. Okay, so it's okay, you can just disconnect and come back in. All right, so we will begin. We will we will begin, right? And today we're going to be covering the first part of uh, this two-part series, which is really covering Fibonacci retracement, right? Sharing with a bit of you um, introduction to Fibonacci, and then I'll share with you a bit of how to incorporate Fibonacci as part of your trading strategy. Okay, so this is actually a pretty powerful tool that I have been using myself. All right, so I will just share with you guys how I go about using Fibonacci. So hi, Deepak. Hello, hello to you over in Nepal, right? Uh, from Singapore here, hello. All right, so before we begin, just understand a quick disclaimer that the information contained in this material is really intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. Now, FP Markets has made every effort to ensure the accuracy of this information at time of this webinar, of this presentation. But understand that it does not, uh, this does not give FP Markets any warranty or representation as to the accuracy, reliability, or completeness of information. But having said that, it is my duty as the presenter to ensure that what I have presented here today at this point in time is accurate at this uh, time of presentation. All right. So, a little bit about me, okay, uh, my name is Isaac, right, so some of you, uh, I recognize a few familiar names, okay, uh, Bartholomew being one of them, right, uh, so I actually currently hold the CMT and CFTE designation, right, so I hope that gives you a bit more confidence in, in the fact that your, your, pre your presenter, your speaker here knows a bit of what he's trying to say, right, what he's sharing with you. Okay, and as with all webinars that I actually carried out, I don't like to wait to the end to have that Q&A session. I like to keep things interactive. I like to keep things flowing, right? I, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just fire them my way. I will do my best 
to reply you guys as soon as possible and as accurately as possible, right? So I like to keep things interactive because I don't want you guys to hold your questions to the end only to lose the train of thought, okay? So, wow, okay, uh, Jiga, you are preparing for CMT level two, right? Uh, wish you all the best. CMT level two is actually more challenging than CMT level three. All right, so uh, this is really the agenda for today uh, because this is part one, right? So I will share with our, there will be an introduction to Fibonacci retracement, okay? And then after that, we, I'll show you guys how to identify swing highs and swing lows, which is important in drawing Fibonacci. Okay, and then I will take it a step further by showing you guys the correct way of drawing Fibonacci retracements. And then I will wrap today's session up by using Fibonacci retracements to identify support level. Now, understand that this is the first part. All right, so I'm really hoping to see you guys at the second part, but this is the first part where, you know, uh, we just keep it to a basic understanding of Fibonacci uh, retracement. All right, so uh, Apritam, I am from Singapore. All right, uh, so I'm from Singapore. All right, so I hope uh, that that it, that is clear. All right, and Cedric, I realized that you actually have a question right at the start, even before the webinar started. Is that does Fibonacci retracement work for cryptocurrency trading? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, um, I'm sure some of you will also have this other question. Does Fibonacci retracement work for every time frame? I would say yes, it does also. But the caveat here is that you know Fibonacci retracement will not work on the one minute, the five minute, the ten minute, fifteen minute uh, time frame. Okay, it can work, but it does not work very well because it's just too choppy. It is just too noisy. All right, so keep your questions flowing. There are a lot of you. If I miss your questions, okay, uh, give me some time. I will get to it. If there are multiple questions of the same type. I will group them together and then I'll reply them. Okay, if after a while I am I, I don't reply you guys, please feel free to ask me one more time. All right, so I hope that uh, clarifies things for all of you. Okay, so a lot of it will actually be carried out on the charts because there's really no better way to explain to you guys how to carry out Fibonacci, how to understand Fibonacci uh, retracement except to show you guys on the charts okay so apologies if the slides are really really limited all right uh, it will seem as if i didn't put in any effort but i beg to differ i will show you guys on the chart okay so the first part all right introduction to fibonacci retracement all right before i dive into this point one i want to I want to understand uh, there are a lot of you. Wow, wow, the numbers are climbing. Okay, I, I'm surprised that you know this is such a hot topic. But that is great, right? I just want to get a sense of the number of attendees here in the room, right? What is your trading experience like? Right? Are you are you new? Okay, or one to three years, or three to five years, or more than five years? Okay, so just just send in your answers, okay, because I want to be able to tailor it for the mass audience okay it, it has to be fair all right so yeah again fresh okay one to three years three to five years more than five years all right just this simple category would do okay wow we have okay wow wow okay fantastic we we, we actually have quite a broad range um there are a lot of you that are fresh there are a lot of you that are about one to three years Okay, um, a number of you, wow, a number of you have eight years, more than more than five years. Wow, okay. So I guess those of you who are more than eight years, right, uh, if you guys have any feedback, you know, send them my way. Maybe we could learn a thing or two, right, from, from you guys, the rest of the participants in this room as well. Okay, so I will have to try to cater it to the mid-tier level. Uh, for those of you who are very experienced, forgive me if it's a bit too basic. For those of you who are really, really fresh, if it is a bit too complicated, ask your questions, clarify them. Okay, that's important. All right, so let's dive right in into the charts. Okay, so I'm going to have to keep a blank canvas right now. Okay, what is Fibonacci retracement, right? The, the idea of Fibonacci. It really started from this uh, Italian mathematician, okay? Who, who I guess he was too free. I'm not sure whether he was, 
you know, under home quarantine or under lockdown, right? He was actually calculating the rate at which rabbits would reproduce. And that was really how uh, he came up with this whole Fibonacci number. All right, so Fibonacci, that is a, a short idea of it, okay? Uh, Fibonacci actually finds its way in the markets in nature as well. I'm sure most of you already know there is the spiral in the in the shell, right? The, um, you know, the, the seashell spirals, okay? And then you can, some, some people, okay? Uh, let me just give you guys a quick, uh, okay? So <laughs> there's this joke, right? Um, that even President Donald Trump's hair, okay, <laughs> is actually in the shape of a, follows the Fibonacci spiral, which is why he's supposedly more photogenic or, or when people take his pictures, you know, really, really intense look. Okay, so that's, that's just a joke. All right, but there's Fibonacci spiral in nearly everything that, that, that we see in nature. Okay, and Fibonacci also uh, has the magic number 61.8, right? It also falls in line uh, with chaos theory. Okay, so chaos theory basically stipulates that, you know, uh, 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 that uh, a, a flap of a butterfly wing somewhere in South America can actually end up creating a typhoon uh, off the shore of Japan, right? So this chaos theory, we can link it to fractal market hypothesis, which is actually a proper uh, market theory, okay? And fractal market hypothesis actually states that, you know, the patterns that you see on the lower time frame, when you zoom out, you can see the same patterns on the bigger time frame as well. And that is essentially what Fibonacci is, right? Uh, uh, when, when Fibonacci spiral, uh, when we see the Fibonacci spiral, we zoom in right to the smallest part of the spiral. And when we zoom out, the pattern is exactly the same. Okay, so that's just a very quick introduction to the whole idea, the whole concept of Fibonacci, right? Does that help you in trading? No, okay, but Fibonacci retracement does. Okay, so Fibonacci retracement, Okay, Fibonacci retracement takes two points. Okay, it, it, there are only two points in Fibonacci retracement. Okay, so I'm just going to draw. Okay, this is Fibonacci retracement from low to high. All right, uh, for those of you who are interested, you can actually take a screenshot of this. These are the Fibonacci numbers that I use myself. Let me just be sure that it's correct. Okay, yeah, so these are the general Fibonacci numbers that I use myself, right, when it comes to Fibonacci retracement. Okay, so there is a reason for all these numbers, which I hope to be able to cover them, okay? Now, the key levels are, of course, 61.8, all right? The 76.4 or 78.6, which are really, really close, and the uh, negative 27.2, all right? So I've highlighted them in red. Okay, so if you guys want to take a screenshot of this, use it as your own setting, by all means, go ahead. Now, Fibonacci retracement takes two points, okay? So how do we identify these two points, which is really, right, the second part of this webinar, all right? But let me just explain to you what all this level means in the first place, okay? Now, imagine that the market is actually moving in this direction, okay? The market is going higher, all right? And then after that, it comes back down. And then after that, the market goes higher one more time, all right? Now, we see that the market is starting to come back down, okay, from this point. So I'm just gonna call this point A, and I'm gonna call this point B. Now, the move from A to B, right, is one straight push, okay, one straight push, the market is moving straight. Now, if we were to take Fibonacci retracement, okay, we always draw it in the direction, right, in the direction of the price movement from low to high. Okay, so I'm just going to write it here, Fib retracement makes use of two points. Draw in the direction of the move okay so this is this is important for for you guys okay so i'm just going to collate my points here try to make the word the words a bit bigger so it's easier for you guys to see all right so let's look at the movement from a to b the movement from a to b 
okay, when I draw, you realize that the, my starting point, my point one says 100%, and then my point two says 0%. Now, what does this mean? When we say that price is retracing, price is pulling back, okay, it means that when price comes down, okay, this would mean that price has retraced or price has pulled back. 23.6% of the original move, right? So the original move will be the move from A. Let me just change the pen color. The move from A to the move at B, okay? So the original move, this is the original move, right? When price comes to 23.6%, it means that this retracement is 23.6% of the entire 100%, right? So this is 23.6 and this is 100%, all right? So I hope you guys are, are getting the idea here, okay? The, by extension, the story is the same. When I say that price comes all the way down, <coughs> to, sorry, to 50%, what it means is that price has retraced 50% of the original move, right? So this, portion here is about 50% of the full 100%. Okay, so it's exactly half, right? So that is how, that is essentially what Fibonacci retracement is. Okay, so once you draw in the direction of the move, it is easier to help you guys identify how far price is pulling back. Okay, generally, generally the idea is when price breaks 23.6, Okay, when price breaks 23.6, it should go to 61.8. Okay, generally, right? Okay, so I'm putting it here. It's, hope it's clear for you guys. <clears throat> okay, so this is a very quick and simple introduction to Fibonacci retracement. Okay, uh, Fibonacci extension, expansion is gonna be a lot more complicated. All right, so while, while we do use it, okay, we do use it is, while we do use it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, okay, uh, I prefer to use Fibonacci retracement because the less complicated it is, the better it is, okay? Hi, uh, Izu. Okay, so I see your question over here, right? Um, which is the best level to enter, okay, and on which level? Now, it, it really depends because you have to look at your analysis as a whole, right? Um, you don't just blindly enter on any level, but I would say that for scalpers, right, for people who trade just off the key levels, okay, 61.8, 78.6, Right, are very good levels to just play a small bounce. So if you want to scalp that five to ten pips, okay, those are the good levels to look at. All right. Okay, so Ronnie, you also have a question. Price has to close below 23.6 or just touch it. Okay, price has to close. Okay, over here I write price breaks and closes below 23.6. Okay. So price has to close, has to break and close below 23.6 for it to go to 61, okay? If you just touch, there's gonna be a reaction, all right? So uh, Ronnie, I hope that answers your question. All right, so let's move on to the second part of, okay, the presentation. Identifying swing highs and swing lows. Now, why is this important? Now, back to the chart. Look at point A, look at point B. How do we know where are the points? How do we select the points? okay, for Fibonacci retracement. Very simple, how do we select the points? We identify swing highs and swing lows. Okay, so this is very important, okay? If you guys fail to identify the correct swing highs and swing lows, okay, you will never you will never be able to draw a correct Fibonacci retracement. Okay, a lot of people have find it very, very confusing. All right, uh, let's let's see what Jiga has to say. 
Okay, so Jiga is exactly having this issue, right? Um, uh, you're confused as to where to place the point one and point two, okay? Even though you think you've identified the swing high and swing lows. So let's just look at the chart. Okay, let me remove all indicator. The chart I have here is of pound dollar, the cable, right? And this is the monthly, okay? The bigger the time frame that, that, that you are on, the easier it is to identify the swing high and swing lows, okay? So follow, follow with me the arrow, right? Follow with me the arrow, okay? Price starts from here. I do not know whether this is a swing high or swing low, but it doesn't matter. Price goes up. And over here, it swings the other way. It goes down. So is this a swing high or swing low? This is a swing high, okay? So price starts from here and it goes all the way down to here before it reverses and swings back up okay so i have identified right my point a and my point b my swing high and my swing low now when i see price reversing okay when i see price reversing what do i do i can draw fibonacci retracement right this is just a very quick example okay i can draw fibonacci retracement again like I said in my in my previous point, okay, draw in the direction of the move, right? Draw in the direction of the move. So this move from point A to point B is downwards. So I draw my Fibonacci retracement from the top downwards all the way down to the low, right? And you see that price actually goes up to the 38.2. It retraces to the 38.2%. So it means that price retraced 38.2% of this entire 100% move. Okay, so it even spikes up higher and it's stuck in between 50, 38.2. So the key lesson, the key point here is Fibonacci works, but it does not work 100%. Nothing, okay, nothing in technical analysis works 100%. TA is more about putting the probability on your side and playing in line with the probability. Okay, so you want the probability to be on your side. Okay, so you see price actually reached the 38.2. Okay, so that is how you identify swing highs and swing lows. Okay, so within the chart, right, within this entire uh, consolidation area here, there are multiple swing highs and swing lows. Okay, just by eyeballing, you can actually see a low, a low, a high, a high. Okay, there are multiple swing lows over here, multiple swing highs, swing low, swing high. So the question is, you know, some people ask me, hey, Isaac, Right, there are so many swing highs, so many swing lows. How do I know which points to take? Okay, how do I know which points to take? Okay, I, I know it can be confusing, but the real guide here, okay, the real guide here, let me just put it there. Okay, swing highs, swing lows. All right, just type it. Okay, so it's easier for you to identify key swing high swing lows look for areas of big movements all right where basically price pushes really really violently okay so again that point to identify key swing high swing lows look for areas of big movements so look over here all right price comes down okay i'm going to change the color a bit Okay, to blue, so it's easy to see. Okay, not really easy to see. Perhaps uh, red. Okay, no, red is a bit hard to see as well. Okay, purple. Just keep it at purple. All right, so price pushes down. It bounces back up. It comes back down again. It comes back up, right, before it comes back down. Now, the general movement here, okay, is actually a downward push. Okay. The general movement here is actually a downward push. So with this downward push, right, we can ignore the smaller swing highs and swing lows inside. Okay, we can ignore the smaller swing highs and swing lows. So if we want to do a Fibonacci retracement, okay, of this downward move, we can draw Fibonacci retracement, remember, in the direction of the movement from the high all the way down to the low, to the lowest point. All right. So you see. This is a bit special, okay? Even though price went all the way down, price actually overextended, right? Overextended the retracement, okay? Which is why I put the 127.20 there, right? Again, back to what I said previously, I try my best not to use Fibonacci extension 
uh, expansion because it's three points, it's complicated, all right? Uh, not that I'm unable to use it, okay? But always using it will make me confused and in trading, it's better to keep things simple. All right, so you draw in the direction of the trend, right? From high to low, we see that price has retraced more than 100%, right? So price basically has reversed the other direction, all right? And price came up to test the 127.20 level. See, it came so close. All right, again, it's not exact, okay? It's not exact. So that was why price reversed there because there is a zone, okay? There is a zone right there. All right, so this is how we identify swing highs and swing lows. Now, a very quick way, <clears throat> if you guys are still going to struggle identifying areas of swing highs and swing lows, a very quick way is to just use the closing chart, okay? Closing price. Look for areas where there is a huge move, okay? Where there is a huge move. If you guys are going to say that this is a swing high, I will not fault you guys because that's really where price started dropping, okay? So you can actually take it from here to here as well, right? There's a swing low, there's a swing high because price dropped here, there's a swing low, okay? There's a swing low, there's a swing high because price started pushing lower, like we said earlier. This is also a swing low because price pushed strongly higher. This is a swing high because price dropped sharply downwards, all right? Could this be a swing low? Some may argue yes, some may argue no, right? Uh, but I would prefer to say that, you know, price probably push all the way lower and this is a new swing low, okay, because there's a strong push up. So to look for the size of the move, you have to change to the closing price, okay, the line chart, and then compare it relatively to the price around it, okay? So you cannot just say that, oh, there's a strong drop, that is a swing high to a swing low, okay? You have to look at the magnitude of the move according to the price around it, okay? So this exists on every single time frame, right? This really exists on every single time frame. We go down to the weekly, you guys can even see swing highs and swing lows now, right? Because of the fractal nature of market, right? There's a swing low here, price push all the way up to a new swing high and then look nearly a straight drop down to this swing low, right? You can consider this uh, swing high because it is still a relatively big drop to a new swing low, okay? And then a push up to another swing high and then a strong drop down again to another swing low. Okay, so if you guys want to use a bit of estimation, you can measure the move, right? It's about 17% uh, for this very big move. This drop down is about another, you know, 10%, all right? So you're looking at anywhere from maybe around a 7% move to a 15% move, all right? Around that, 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 that uh, percentage move. But that is for pound dollar, okay? You can actually change to another chart. Sorry, I want to keep my drawing here. Okay, so I'm going to move to another chart. You can actually look at another um, pair like gold. Okay, gold we have on monthly. Okay, swing high, swing low. It's very easy to identify, right? Even on daily, you can identify the swing high, swing low, right? High, low, okay? And then there's another low here, right? Is this a swing high? Not really, okay? But this is definitely a swing high because there's a strong drop. And then there's a strong push, so there's a swing low to another swing high. Right, and then there's a swing low here. Okay, so look at where price is right now for gold. This is on the daily. Right, I have identified a swing high to a swing low. I can do a Fibonacci retracement in the direction of the move after identifying the swing high and the swing low. High to low. Okay, look at that. Price has surpassed. Okay, price recently, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, price actually was pulling back below the 61.8. Right, price was pulling back below the 61 point. There was a reaction over there. Okay, so because it's a key Fibonacci level, right? Like I mentioned earlier, if you just want to play off the, the level, just play off 61.8, 78.6. Okay, so now price has pushed um, broken above the 61 point. The next level that we should be looking at based on Fibonacci should be the 76.40, 78.60 level, this zone here. So it's the 18.93 for gold. All right, so, so this is how we draw. Fibonacci. Okay, this is how we draw Fibonacci. This is how we identify swing highs and swing lows. Okay, are you guys clear so far on identifying swing highs and swing lows?
Okay, I think my, my drawing just disappeared. All right, um, I will type it out for you guys later again. Okay, I think I accidentally cleared the drawing. Let me see whether I can bring it back. Nope, unfortunately, I can't bring it back. Okay, so anyway, my bad. I will still summarize it for you guys later. Okay, so not to worry. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have identified, now that we have learned how to identify swing highs and swing lows, okay, I have uh, Ashley Dijo who's actually raising the, the hand. Okay, so there's no need to raise your hand. If you have a question, just fire away. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, Michelle's asking a question. Will I be sharing my slides and snapshots later? Uh, unfortunately, my slides is just this, okay? So there really isn't, like I said, okay? If you look at the slides, you'll think that I'm very lazy. I never prepare anything, but actually a lot of it was already prepared, okay? And it's already being prepared on the charts itself, all right? Fibonacci retracement is something that uh, needs to be done going through together. All right, uh, no amount of notes will help clarify the doubts on Fibonacci extension or retracement. Okay, so no worries, Misha. I will still um, summarize my points later at the end of the webinar. Okay, and then you guys can actually uh, take a screenshot of it. Okay, so no, no worries about that. As for the recording, I would actually have to speak to the to the FP Markets marketing side. I, I'm thinking it is possible for them to send you the recording. Uh, I will give you a, a email later. I think I, I think I do have an email. Yeah, yeah, you guys probably have an email that uh, you guys can email to for the recording. Okay, so Magun, you actually have a question, right? When you have a trend line, and if you take a retracement from where it touches the trend line, then move the FIBO drawing to the niche, next touch point. I've noticed where it next touches, the candles generally align with some of the FIBO levels. Is this right? Okay, so let me just try to get your understanding correct. Okay, so I need to look for something with a nice trend line. Okay, so I think a nice trend line would be something, let's see, on the dollar, uh, on the pound dollar, on the daily. Okay, yeah, maybe this is this is a pretty nice trend line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a trend line, maybe from this swing low. Okay, something like that. See so many touches. So this trend line is pretty nice. Okay, if I take a retracement from where it touches the trend line, so I would think that if it's from, let's say, let's look at this point, point A to point B, swing low to swing high, right? Okay, swing low to swing high. Okay, I take a retracement, point one to point two. Let me just zoom in on this area so it's easy for you guys to see. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, from where it touches the trend line, then move the feeble drawing to the next touch point. Okay, wait, you're saying to the next touch point. So this is the first, sorry, yeah. This is the first point it touches the trend line. This is the second point it touches the next trend line. So you're saying draw a feeble from this point to the next touch point. Okay, uh, no, Magun, that is not, uh, that is not correct, all right? Remember, what is the idea of Fibonacci retracement? The idea of Fibonacci retracement is to tell you how far price is coming back. Right now, when you're drawing from one starting point, one swing low to another swing low, the Fibonacci retracement does not tell you how far price is coming back, all right? It, you, you are just, no offense, uh, Magun, all right? you are just drawing blindly, okay? Uh, but let's all learn together, always draw Fibonacci in the direction of the move. Right, so point one is here, price went up, I'm drawing in the direction of move, I go higher to the swing high. Okay, and look what happens, price retraces, right? The moment it closes below 23.6, it comes to 61. What happens? There is a small reaction, and then it goes all the way down to the trend line, the 76.4, which is in line with the trend line, and then it pushes up to negative 27, even to negative 61.8. All right, so Fibonacci works, okay? If you take another swing low, all right, let me just let me just remove this. You take another swing low, which is here, a swing low here. Price push all the way up to this swing high here. Now we draw a Fibonacci again. It, remember, it's still on the trend line, okay, from low. We draw in the direction of the movement, direction of the movement low to high, right? Look what happens. Price comes all the way back down, right? touches the trend line, which is in line with the key Fibonacci retracement of 61.8. And look what happens after that. 
price goes all the way up to negative 27.20, which is normally my first take profit, and then it spikes to the negative 61 before finally reversing again. Okay, so Fibonacci, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, give me a moment. Okay, so Magun, you're saying slide to the next touch point. Okay, uh, but let me just complete my statement first. Fibonacci works. Okay, it works in line with the trend line during my time, uh, when I when I when when I was uh, actually advising the trading desk of some of the biggest buy side institutions. Okay, uh, they actually do look at Fibonacci as well. They also do look at Elliott Wave. All right, so I'm just putting it out there. Institutions do look at Elliott Wave. Institutions do look at Fibonacci levels okay so i'm just putting it out there based on my own personal professional experience with the institutional side of things okay so you're saying slide to the next touch point so let's say i draw okay i draw the fibonacci level and then i slide to the next touch point something like that are you saying something like that Okay, for confluence, we have to draw again and see whether there is a confluence. All right, so negative 20 cent, 20, you can't take 0% because 0% is really where the points end. Okay, but you have a 38.2 retracement falling in line with the 61.8. But again, I would say that when you slide, when you slide the Fibonacci retracement over, you need to ask yourself what is the reason when you slide this is your starting point this is your ending point but where is the real swing high right the real swing high is here so you're not really getting any real um additional um information out of this new adjusted fibonacci level okay you're just going through what we call uh confirmation bias right looking for confluence level that is not how we look for confluence level okay i hope to show you guys how to look for confluence level at least at a part two of Fibonacci strategies. Okay, if there's time later, maybe I'll show you guys a bit of how to use Fibonacci retracement to look for Fibonacci confluence levels. All right, so Magun, I hope uh, that cl clarifies and clear up uh, some of your, your, your doubts. But if you actually have a system that somehow um, manages to, you know, um, <clears throat> code and, and adjust Fibonacci retracements like that, as long as there's a proper uh, logical reasoning behind it, okay, I and it works for you, then yes, you should continue using it. All right, but I'm just saying based on a logical, based from, from a logical standpoint. All right, it, it really has to, it really has to make sense. Okay, so that is that is um, that is what I'm trying to say. All right, so I hope no offense taken. All right, so I have a few. <clears throat> okay, I have another question, uh, from Chris and Bartholomew. You guys are asking uh, roughly the same questions with regards to time frame. Like I said, Fibonacci works on every single time frame. All right. Uh, let's let's clear the chart. Let's go down to the one hour. Okay. Look at this. There's a swing. There's a swing high. Okay. Price goes sideways, and then it pushes all the way down to a swing low. All right. And then now that swing low is done, price pushes higher. I want to see how far price can come back up. Okay. So. I draw Fibonacci in the direction of the trend from high to low. All right, look what happens. Price comes all the way up. All right, and it actually comes close to the 7640. Hey, it comes close to the 7640. And this is on a one hour. Right, we can follow the movement. There's a swing low here. There's a swing high. Price drops all the way down. I want to know what's the possibility of price coming, uh, how far price is coming back. I take a retracement from the low draw in the direction of the movement okay look at that price comes down taps the 61.8 and then continues going higher all right so of course this is a bit of hindsight bias right if i were to use it uh, on more recent time okay this would be a bit tricky because this movement right this movement is not completed yet okay so uh, since i'm at this point now Let's move on to correct way of drawing fit, which I've already explained to you guys. The correct way of drawing Fibonacci is to identify a swing high, swing lows, draw in the direction of the trend, okay? Draw in the direction of the movement. Now, but what is the trap of Fibonacci? Okay, the trap is that Fibonacci has to be done on a completed, okay? It has to be done on a completed movement, right? Look at this. 
price is still pushing higher, right? I've identified a swing low. Do we know that this is a swing high? We do not know, right? So if I were to just draw Fibonacci blindly from low, and then I just draw to where price is right now. Sure, you know, I've identified Fibonacci retracement, okay? And, and I can see all the Fibonacci retracement levels. But what happens if price pushes higher? Price goes higher, I adjust my Fibonacci level. Price goes higher, I adjust again. Price goes higher, I adjust again. Price goes higher, I adjust again. And what's going to happen? All the Fibonacci levels start shifting, right? It becomes inaccurate, okay? So this is a trap, okay? So the correct way of drawing Fibonacci retracement is that it has to be drawn on completed movement, all right? Drawn on completed movements, okay? So that's important for drawing Fibonacci retracement, all right? So let's see. There is a high, there is a low. If I will draw a retracement from high in the direction of the movement to low, right? The levels don't change because price has already been imprinted, okay? Fibonacci will not change. And look what happened. We are now getting a reaction at the 127.20 level. Okay, so the 127.20 is also quite an important and powerful level. Okay, so Fibonacci can work on every time frame. We can even go down to the 15 minutes, right? We can go down to the 15 minutes and I'll show you guys. <clears throat> you can identify the swing high, swing lows very quickly. There's a high, there's a low, draw in the direction of the movement, high to low, and look at that. Price came back up, tapped the 7860 and then pushed back down again right but the thing is when you are on the lower time frame okay it gets more and more and more choppy right let's take a look at the three minutes okay it gets very choppy right can have a swing high swing low do you think this is a swing high possibly possibly not okay but this is another swing high again okay and if you were to take this whole movement all right price comes down 50 percent pushes up to negative 27 you can take another retracement again Okay, price comes down to 78, test the 88, and then push higher again, right? So when we're on a lower time frame, it becomes very choppy, right? Especially areas like this, where do we draw retracements? Okay, it's going to be very complicated. All right, so uh, I hope uh, Chris and Bartholomew, that answers your question. Okay, um, <clears throat> Okay, I have a few other questions. Okay, uh, Bashir, you're asking, is any difference between drawing Fibonacci in Forex and cryptocurrency? No, there's no difference. All right, you can even draw uh, Fibonacci on. Uh, hang on, let me just try this. Okay, yeah, you have the COVID nineteen confirmed total, right? So something like this. Okay, you can even draw Fibonacci on this, right? But it's just climbing. It's not going to tell you anything. Okay, so jokes jokes aside. Okay, jokes aside. Let's take a look at uh Bitcoin. Okay, uh, I will choose Binance because they're one of the biggest. Okay, and no point looking at a monthly, weekly. Let's look at a daily. Okay, <clears throat> let's identify. All right, we have a swing high. Okay, and then we have a swing low. Right, and we see price, we see price forming a bullish engulfing coming back up. So we hurry to a Fibonacci retracement high to low. And look at that. Price reacted right at the key Fibonacci level. Okay, key Fibonacci level, and then it goes all the way down. It taps the negative 2720, which I said is usually my first take profit, and then it immediately reverses. Okay, so it immediately reverses. All right, so yes, Fibonacci can also be applied, okay, to cryptocurrency. It can be applied to oil, all right. Uh, it can be applied, okay, to equities as well, right? Uh, we have Tesla. Okay, so um, we have uh, 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 we have one of our friends here, right? Um, Ibrahim saying, you know, sir, use Fibo on XRP. Uh, no need to call me, sir. All right, uh, just Isaac will do. Okay, so let's take a look at XRP. Okay, so we are on a daily time frame, right? We're on a daily time frame. Now, uh, because this is just focusing on Fibonacci, I will just show you guys uh, based on using Fibonacci. Okay, so there's a swing high, push all the way down to swing low. If it's hard for you guys to see, switch to the line chart. You can tell where the areas of swing high, swing lows are, 
right? We draw in the direction of the movement, high to low. Look what happened. Price came up and tapped the 78.60 level and then pushed back down, right? So there is a swing low over here, all right, to a possible swing high, right? It looks like there's a swing high over here because this is still a nice push down. Okay, so I will draw a retracement from low to high. And look at that, price came and tapped the 61.8 and pushed and reacted off there. Okay, so that is how we can actually draw Fibonacci on uh, 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 any, any uh, asset class. All right, so Ibrahim, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so uh, hang on, I've got quite a number of questions. All right, so Tiro, can I provide on trading short term and long term trade using Fibonacci and also how to place stop loss and take profit? Okay, uh, this is this really should be kept for uh, part two. All right, but very quickly, all right, uh, I I rather look at uh, FX. Okay, so any pair, all right. So let's say Aussie dollar. Okay, so Aussie dollar. Let's say let's look at a one hour. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, where did I stop? You guys are unable to hear me. Can you guys hear me? Okay, fantastic. Okay, where, where did I stop? Right, okay. So um I think I'll go back to Aussie dollar. So okay, I have Aussie dollar on uh on a one hour, right? There are two options. Okay, I can either I do a, I identify my swing low to swing high. I draw in a direction, I draw my 0.1 to 0.2 Fibonacci retracement. I see that price has broken below 23.6. I can either go short to 61.8, all right? I can either go short to 61.8 or I can go long, okay? But how do I choose whether to go short or long? It depends on my trading style, right? Now, if I'm a, if I'm a day trader, I can go short, not an issue, right? But risk reward is important for me and I'm predominantly a swing trader, right? So what do I have? What do I do? Okay, I will look for market structures, right? And on the daily, we see that the market structure is that price is making higher lows and higher highs, right? When market is making higher lows and higher highs, it means that you know, we are in an uptrend. Very clearly, this is very simple, right? Higher lows, higher highs, we are in an uptrend. Lower lows, lower highs, we're in a downtrend. 
all right and i'm sure you guys whether you are new trading or long-term trader right been trading for a long time you guys will know always trade in line with the trend because the trend is your friend the trend the trend is your friend until it ends okay so on the daily is bullish the trend is bullish all right so on a one hour i will choose okay i will choose to go bullish so no point playing this draw all right and where will i put my entry okay i can put my entry at a 61.8 but again like i said today's session is really based on fibonacci okay normally i will never base off fibonacci alone i look at support and resistance okay i look at uh key graphical areas right uh that are nice right and then i i combine all of that to find a nice entry level all right but just using fibonacci and as an example 61.8 will be my entry stop loss is very subjective right it depends on where you want to put your stop loss some people use stop loss based on parabolic SAR, the stop and reverse indicator. Some use based on ATR. Okay, some use based outside market structure. Some use based outside supply demand zone. Right. Some use based on a fixed amount of pips, which I think is silly unless you are a scalper. Okay. Some also based on Fibonacci levels. Okay. So if you want to base on Fibonacci levels, you can actually put it just slightly below the 88. Okay. So this is to prevent yourself from being stock hunted out. For me personally, I prefer to use it outside of market structure. My take profit, like I said, is the first take profit is always at a negative 27.20, which is in line with this resistance here. Okay, my second take profit is always at the 61.8, which is also in line with this market consolidation area over here. All right, so very nice take profit levels, okay, one and two, right? And this is how I would actually lay out my trade. Okay, so if let's say, let's see, let's see how price moves, right? Price goes down, okay. Okay, look, it came shy of my entry, right? Uh, but generally speaking, okay, this 50% this is a stronger area because like I said, I combine support and resistance levels as well. And I look for different confluence, right? So, but I'm just saying how I would use Fibonacci retracement. Okay, so price came close to the entry and look what happened. It pushed higher, okay? And it actually touched my first take profit, the negative 27.20, right? So now that it touched my first take profit, what I will do is I'll close out 50 to 75% of my trade, okay? Move my stop loss to break even, protect my entry, right? Let the remaining position ride all the way to the top, okay? So that is more about risk and trade management already, okay? So this is how I would actually use, okay, Fibonacci to trade all right so this was based off the question of uh give me a moment of i had the name just now okay give me a moment guys you guys are flooding me okay wait up okay Okay, I think it's uh, much further up. All right, uh, not, not an issue, okay? So yeah, uh, by Tiro, right? Uh, how to trade using Fibonacci and how to place stop loss and take profit, okay? So a few other questions, okay? Um, Michelle, you're asking, you don't understand what's the level I start to take profit. How come I take profit at a retrace level like negative 27.20? Okay, so this is uh, really based on, based on uh, years of experience. Where, where I find that negative 27.20 actually works really, really nicely um, on Fibonacci retracement. Negative 27.20, 27.20 is actually also, if you guys trade using harmonics, 27.20 is actually also one of the harmonics number, all right? So that was what I actually combined together to get the Fibonacci retracement negative 27.20. And like I said, okay, um, you can actually put the 20, uh, 2720 into Fibonacci extension, but I personally don't like to use Fibonacci extension because it takes three points. So instead of just keeping it simple, identifying swing highs, swing lows, swing lows, swing highs, right? You need to identify a middle portion. Okay, so where is the middle portion? Very, very discretionary. All right, so I want to keep it as simple as possible, as systematic as possible, which is why I included it together with Fibonacci retracement. All right, so Michelle, I hope that answers your question. Magun, you asked another question. Do I recommend uh, candle body to body or wick to wick? Okay, for me, retracement always take from the wick to the wick. Okay, because 
because because because the week is where price on the lower time frame has actually gone to so you want to look at the entire movement all right so magun i hope that answers your question Okay, but hello, Mew, you've also um, added that uh, you back tested and forward tested flip retracement together with price action. You find that it works well when it aligns with graphical levels. Exactly. I totally agree with that. Okay. Graphical levels is king, price action is king. All right. <clears throat> okay, so Fias, you are asking me to look at an uptrend such as PECA. Okay, so it's a Malaysian stock. All right, so let's get out of this replay mode. Let's start off with the long-term time frame. Like I said, I will always like to look at the bigger picture. It's just straight up, okay? Uh, nothing much to see. On the weekly, also straight up, nothing much to see, right? This is a perfect example to cover my last point using Fibonacci retracement to identify support levels. Very straightforward, okay? When a price push is so strong, okay, I'm going to test you guys now. From the swing low to the swing high, okay? When a price push is so strong, very easy. You just draw from swing low to swing high. And then all these are the support levels. This 23.6 is a support level. This 38.2 is a possible support level. 50% is a possible support level. So it's 61.8, so it's 76.4. Every single retracement is a possible support level. All right? But only the 61.8, 76.40, 78.60 are the stronger levels for me. Now, time to test you guys. What was the first mistake that I did here when drawing Fibonacci retracement? And what was the second mistake? I made two mistakes here. All right, they are linked. What are the two mistakes? Can you guys catch it? If you guys catch it, you guys probably know how to draw Fibonacci retracements already. Okay, fantastic, right? Uh, yeah, you guys got um, yeah, yeah, you guys got 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 the first point. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so uh, Bartholomew, for your benefit, I'll repeat the question. Okay, when I was drawing this Fibonacci retracement, I made two mistakes. Okay, what are the two mistakes? Okay, so everyone has actually um, <clears throat> and the two mistakes are linked, right? So everyone has actually identified the major mistake, which is the trend is not yet completed. Right, the swing high is not established yet. Fantastic. All right, because if price is going to push higher, my Fibonacci retracement is going to change. So that's my first mistake. Swing high not established yet. Second mistake, I immediately said that this was a swing high. Okay, so that is not correct. Okay, that is not correct. We don't know whether it's a swing high yet because the movement is not yet completed. Okay, so now let's go down to the daily. Now the daily, we're starting to see a bit clearer. Right, look here, there is a swing low to a swing high, a completed movement, and price came down a bit, right? I'm going to draw a retracement on the completed movement in the direction of the move, okay? And look what happens. Price came down, okay, tested the 38.2, didn't go to the 61.8, but instead pushed up to the negative 27.20. Okay, so negative 27.20 is already rich, right? So, I would be careful about going long because negative 2720 is already rich. Okay. Now, I do not know whether this is a swing high that is completed because I need to see a big move, right? So let's just go down to the lower time frame, the four hours. Okay. It looks like the market is consolidating sideways. So it is safe for me to say that I can draw a Fibonacci retracement here as well. And right now, price is testing 23.6. So I will have to wait for price to break the 23.6. If it breaks the 23.6, possibly go down to 61.8, but graphically, there's a support level over here, right? So price could possibly break the 23.6, drift down to the 50% before pushing up to the negative 27.20 again, right? So why am, I, why am I more confident that this is bullish? Because price is making higher lows, and higher highs, right? So we can expect price to make another higher low and another higher high, right? So this is in line with the long-term trend, right? Monthly and weekly chart, we are very, very bullish. Okay, so Fibonacci can also be applied to equities as well. <clears throat> okay, so let we only have two minutes, all right? So I'm not going to take any more questions.
Okay, I will be looking for the other questions that I have not yet replied. So Prakash is asking, FIBO is based on swing high and swing low on such condition. How can we predict that market will be on uptrend or downtrend? Okay, so for trend movements, look at the long long term time frame, right? Um, if you are a if you are a week if you are a swing trader, okay, you can look at the four hour daily weekly, right? Uh, monthly. If you are a day trader, you can look at a one hour, four hour, and a daily. Okay, so Brakesh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, Michelle, what's my probability of success for using Fibonacci retracement to get decent profit gains? Well, the risk reward ratio is very, very beautiful. Like I showed you in the Aussie dollar earlier, right? Look at the risk reward. Okay, if I put it outside of the market structure from my original position, the risk reward is about one is to three. Okay, and the moment it hits my take profit, I protect 50% of my position. So it's, it's, it's all right. Okay, <clears throat> but having said that, don't blindly just use Fibonacci retracement alone. Okay, it's very important to combine other factors together with it. Okay, so Emil, can I use an all-time high and how do I use FIB to take profit on an all-time high? So the good question would be to look at S&P, right? S&P was at an all-time high. Okay, so this is on the four hour, this is on the daily, I think the four hour is nicer. All right, so a bit of hindsight bias, right? A bit hard to see, but line chart. Look at that. We have a swing low over here. Okay, pushed up, price came back down. There's a swing high over here. Okay, so I'm going to draw from low to high. Fibonacci from low to high. Okay, price came down, tested the 7860, tested the 88, immediately rejected, came close to the negative 2720. Okay, so email um, based on an all time high. Uh, when it's something like that, when it comes close, like I said, it's never an exact zone. All right, never an exact zone. When I see this first red candle, I'll probably just close out some of my position already. So it's an active monitoring. It's never a set and forget kind of thing. All right. <clears throat> so email, I hope that answers your question. Okay. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, we actually have come to the end of today's webinar, like I earlier promised, let me just write down the summary for today. So Fibonacci retracement, okay, it consists of two points, right? And to, to draw, um, you have to draw in the direction of the movement, okay? So if it's Example, if it's bullish, okay, if price is upwards, you draw from low to high. If it's bearish, you draw from high to low, all right? So that's the second point. Third point is <clears throat> you always draw based on the swing high and swing lows, okay? So Okay, so draw based on swing highs, swing lows, right? To identify swing highs, swing lows, you, you can use, okay, to identify swing highs and swing lows, <clears throat> okay, look at area for, look at area of big movements. And if it's hard to see, use line charts as well. Okay. And what else? All right. So, uh, okay. Wait for a break and close below 23.6%. And price will generally drop to 61.8%. Okay. Oh so many words i don't like it when there's so many words okay so this is essentially what i've covered today for fibonacci all right <clears throat> uh ronnie is saying that uh i cannot see my screen can you guys see my screen okay yeah so this is really how we, uh, no, no worries, Ronnie, okay? Um, thanks for pointing that out. All right, so this is the summary of 
today's session, right? Uh, understanding Fibonacci and using Fibonacci as part of your trading strategy. All right, guys, um, I leave this here for about the next 15 seconds for you guys to whip forward your handphone or you can use your computer and take a snapshot, a screenshot. Okay. And having said that, if you guys want a recording, okay, for, and there's no question and answers really, like I said, it really should be free flowing. Okay. Email support at fpmarkets.com. All right. So remember to email this, this email. Okay. Just tell them, you know, Hey, I attended. Okay. I attended today's, um, webinar with Isaac. All right. Uh, give them your email. All right, give them your email, give them the, um, the name of this webinar. All right, and uh, I hope the FP Markets uh, marketing team should be able to send you guys the recording, okay? I will, I will go and check with them as well. All right, so for all upcoming webinars, you can go to this uh, link over here, but not to worry, you can actually also go over to the FP Markets website, All right? You can go over to the FP Markets website at the top under resources and under the education column, there are webinars, you can click on it. And if you scroll down, you should be able to see, okay, all the upcoming, uh, uh, what do you call that? All the upcoming webinars that you can register on, all right? Okay, but for the second part, give me a moment. Uh, I know some of you are requesting this second part, right? Just give me a moment, okay? I'm just going to check the... Okay, I think the second series would possibly be on... Okay, where is it? Sorry, uh, guys, it's a bit... Uh... Too many tabs open. <clears throat> okay, the second series for this right uh, would be possibly on the 25th of May. Okay, possibly be on the 25th of May. All right, so keep your eye out on this uh, web page. All right, and I hope to see you guys there. But uh, until then, right, thanks everyone for, for, for the time today. Right, wish you guys all the best. Trade safe, stay safe, go back and practice. All right, and, I, and I'll catch you guys again. Have a great day, guys. It was good today.